Trump now addressing an audience over in Alabama. He started speaking just a couple minutes ago, but I don't want you to miss any of it. So we are going to play it from the beginning, raw and unfiltered. Well, I want to thank you, and it's great to be back in Alabama with so many proud American patriots who stand for God, family, and country. That's what you stand for. I want to thank Governor Kay Ivey for being with us tonight, and the great Kay. You look great, Kay. I'm not surprised. Doing a good job, too. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. And also, Chairman John Wall, he broke all sorts of records tonight. They broke the attendance and the fundraising records. They broke every record in the book. So, John, uh, really good job. Please sit down. We're going to be here for a little while, right? Sit down. Thank you very much. But John's been a friend uh, really from the beginning. And today, I'm also greatly honored to receive the endorsements of so many outstanding Alabama leaders. We have just about all of them that we were looking for. They've been warriors with me, and uh, they know how we fight, and they know how to fight, and they know that we win. Most of whom, though, are with us tonight, including your great senator who just introduced me, Tommy Tuberville. What a great man. He's strong, he's smart, he's loyal, and then he's truly a fantastic guy, and he's my friend, and we love Tommy. Treat him good. You have one of the really, thank you. We have one of the great ones there. Representatives, Jerry Carl, Barry Moore, Mike Rogers, Robert Adderholt, Dale Strong, and Gary Palmer. These are warriors. Gary's feeling better now. He had a little problem with the back. But he's feeling good, and he wanted to be here, and I appreciate it. But these are fantastic people. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Will Ainsworth, thank you, Will, very much for being with us. Doing a great job. Agriculture Commissioner Rick Pate. Rick, thank you very much. Public Service Commission President Twinkle Cavanaugh. I love that name, Twinkle. Thank you very much. Thanks. Public Service Commissioners Jeremy Oden and Chip Beaker. And I really appreciate you and being here. And Cliff Sims, thanks for doing a fantastic job, Cliff. I'd also like to recognize Alabama Secretary of State Wes Allen, who's here. <laughs> Wes, thank you. Thank you, Wes. State Senator Gerald Allen. Senator, thank you very much. Friends of mine, Ambassador Lindy Blanchard and her great husband, John. Thank you very much. A wonderful job. A wonderful, wonderful job as ambassador. A man who's just been incredible. What a voice he's got and what a wife he's got. His wife is named Kim and his name is Lee Greenwood and he sings that beautiful song. Is Where is Lee? Is Lee here? We got to see Lee. Thank you. What a voice. What a voice. We don't know what it is, Lee, but it works. And they love it. And uh, congratulations. Great career. And Great family. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Catherine Engelbrecht, a real incredible woman. Where is Catherine and Greg Phillips? Where are they? Truth to vote. They have done a job. They found more fake votes than any people, I think, in this country. And they are fake with all of the things. And they have them on tape. And you go through a lot. And we appreciate it. And get ready. Get those votes ready. Just get them ready. Keep those tapes handy because you're going to need them, and we're going to all need them as a country. Thank you very much. You do a fantastic job. Real patriots. We appreciate it. Eight years ago this month, we held one of the very first rallies of the 2016 campaign right here in Alabama. Together, we launched the greatest political movement in the history of our country. And now, with the help of Alabama patriots — oh, we love Alabama — won it by 45 points. But Alabama patriots like you, we're going to do it again, but we're going to do it even bigger and better than 2016. You know, I don't know if you know, we got a hell of a lot more votes in 2020 than we did in 2016. Millions and millions of more votes. But 2016 was very, very special, and we taught people a lot, and they taught us a lot, frankly. But this state has been with us right from the beginning, Kay, I have to say, right from the beginning. 
and we will completely finish the job. We are going to do something that's going to be so incredible. On Election Day 2024, we're going to evict crooked Joe Biden from the White House. We're going to expel the criminals and thugs from the halls of power in Washington, D.C., and we are going to make America great again. From the beginning of our movement, it's really been a true force in American politics that's dared to stand up. It's an incredible thing. We dared to stand up to the care, and we have to go on, and we have to win some battles. And I think you're seeing that we're winning a lot. We're going to have a tremendous election. The poll numbers are the highest we've ever had. And people are very upset out there, angry, upset. They don't like what's happening to our country because our country is going to hell going to hell. We said no to open borders, no to globalist trade deals, no to endless wars, and no to the godless values of the communist left. That's what they are. They skipped socialism. Remember, I used to say, this will not be a socialist country, and I was right. They skipped that station. We always put America first. In response, our enemies unleashed an army of rabid left-wing lawyers, corrupts, and really corrupt Marxist prosecutors, these are dishonest people, bad people, deranged government agents and rogue intelligence officers to try and stop our movement. Remember the 51 intelligence officials that lied about the laptop? They said, oh, the laptop, Russia disinformation. No, they all lied. 51 of them lied. And it would have made a difference of about 11 points in the election, according to the pollsters. They lied. As an example, every one of these Many fake charges filed against me by the corrupt Biden DOJ could have been filed two and a half years ago. They didn't want to do it two and a half years ago. They wanted to wait, and they did wait. They waited right to the middle of an election, and they waited until I became the dominant force in the polls because we're dominating everybody, including Biden, in the polls. And then they filed them all, every one of them, all at essentially one time, including local DAs and AGs and even other cases, right in the middle of the campaign, where we're leading by so much. And it's not going to make any impact, because every time they file an indictment, we go way up in the polls. We need one more indictment to close out this election. One more indictment. And this election is closed out. Nobody has even a chance. We've already defeated the Republicans. There are two and three and one. You know, they all want me to go, Kay, onto the debate stage. And I say, well, if we're at 71 and they're at zero, one, two, three, some of them are at four or five, I don't know. Does it really make a lot of sense? It doesn't really. I love to debate, but you know, sometimes you don't want to be a fool. You want a smart president. You don't want a stupid president. But, you know, the radical left, what they say is, oh, we want Trump. That's only because we're leading in the polls, because they're a party of disinformation, misinformation, a big party of disinformation. The person they don't want is Trump. We beat them by so much last time. We beat them with crooked Hillary. They've never recovered from that. That's why the hatred is so great. But remember this. If somebody else were leading this banner, they'd be attacked with false stories also. They'd be attacked with the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax and the fake dossiers and all of the crazy things that these people do. They're lunatics. And the question is, I don't believe they'd be able to handle it because you got to be very different. I'm not going to go beyond that, but you got to be very different to be able to do what we did. In four years, we had one of the most successful administrations in history with the tax cuts and the rebuilding of our military, the greatest regulation cuts in history. And we didn't get involved in any wars. We brought our people back home. We defeated ISIS. All of the things that we did. The fact is that it's not fair and it's probably not legal what they're doing. They want to interfere in my campaign. They want to interfere in the elections. They commonly use tactic in third world countries. That's where this tactic comes, third world fourth world, fifth world countries, and they're taking it to a level that our country has never seen. The fake charges put forth in their sham indictment are an outrageous criminalization of political speech. This order is 
you make a statement, oh, we have to indict him because he said we were dishonest, let's indict him. They're trying to make it illegal to question the results of a bad election. It was a very bad election, everybody knows that. But only a party that cheats in elections would try to make it illegal because if you have nothing to hide, why would you do that? And why would you be afraid to have those results come out? If you can't challenge a rigged election or if you don't have borders, then in actuality, you really don't have a country. You don't have borders. Millions and millions of people are pouring through our borders like an open wound, like a sieve. We're not the ones trying to undermine American democracy. We are the ones fighting to save our democracy. We're fighting to save our democracy. So this uh, ridiculous indictment against us, it's not a legal case. It's an act of desperation by a failed and disgraced crooked Joe Biden and his radical left thugs to preserve their grip on power. They want to do anything they can to preserve it. And we are in their way because we want to bring our country back. Our country has never been so bad. I don't think it's ever been in this position so bad. And we have a very dangerous situation because we have other countries with nuclear weapons and the weaponry is so powerful. And we have a man that could he can't put together two sentences. And he's in charge of whether or not we have a nuclear war. And I don't like that. And you don't like that either. Biden and his protectors know he cannot win this race any other way. So now they're trying something that hasn't been tried in this country, election interference. They rigged the presidential election of 2020. We're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election of 2024. As the nation's top legal scholars have stated, the Biden administration's charges are a legal and constitutional travesty. Jonathan Turley, great guy, highly, highly respected, said this is a free speech killing indictment. Killing free speech, that's what it is. And referring to the deranged Jack Smith, He's not only going to have to just bulldoze through the First Amendment, he's going to have to bulldoze through a line of cases by the Supreme Court of the United States. In other words, this is an absolute case of prosecutorial misconduct. Andy McCarthy, highly respected, said this, to indict on such a theory in a manner that quite willfully intrudes into a presidential election is worse than irresponsible. The editors at the National Review wrote, this Trump indictment should not stand, should not stand. It's a terrible thing they're doing to our country. The only civil rights that have been violated in this matter are my civil rights and those of the countless people that Biden and the communists have been persecuting. And they are communists and they're Marxists and they're, they're people that don't get it. They get it, they, you know, they're vicious and they're smart, but we're smarter and we're tougher than they are. And we're going to take it back and we have no choice because otherwise we're not going to have a country left. The reason this is happening is simple. Joe Biden is the most incompetent and at the same time, most corrupt president in the history of the United States. The Biden crime family was taking in money from China, Ukraine, Russia, and so many other countries. And now every time more Biden corruption is exposed, his henchmen indict me because they want to knock out the bad publicity. Do you ever see? Whenever they have something big happening, they put another indictment or a special indictment. It's called a cover-up. And what they do is illegal and horrible. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a truly great badge of honor because I'm being indicted for you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, Lee Greenwood. Never forget our enemies want to stop us because we are the ones and the only ones that are able to stop them. Freedom is very simple. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. In the end, they're not after me. They're after you. And I just happen to be standing in their way. And I will never leave. I will never let them do that. 
And I promise you this, if you put me back in the White House, their reign will be over, and America will be a free nation once again. We're not a free nation. We don't have a free press. We have a corrupt press. They're corrupt. When I came out with a term many years ago, fake news now, I mean, honestly, it's just not a strong enough term. It's been a brilliant term, but it's not a strong enough. These are corrupt people. They don't want to even report. I mean, you have Biden got $10.2 million. You don't even read it in a newspaper. You don't see it on the news. They don't want to talk about it. These people are corrupt. From the first day in office, I will appoint a special prosecutor to study each and every one of the many claims being brought forth by Congress concerning all of the crooked acts, including bribes from China and many other foreign countries that go into the coffers and go straight into the coffers of the Biden crime family. It is a crime family. He's a corrupt, corrupt person. It's often said that Republicans don't fight hard enough, and I agree with that. We need more fighters like Tommy and others. We have some good fighters, but we don't have enough of them. We have some bad ones, too. But they never said that about Trump. And I think it's one of the reasons that you like me. It's one of the reasons that I like you, and it's one of the reasons I like Alabama, because you're fighters. And you'll see that. On the very first day of my presidency, the deep state is destroying our nation, but the tables must turn and we will quickly destroy the deep state. We know where the bodies are buried. In the most recent Rasmussen poll, we are up by 44 points with Trump at 57 percent, Ron DeSanctimonious at 13 percent, and the rest of them are very low. Even last week's New York Times poll has me up by 37 points. 37, that's a lot. What do you think, Kay? It's hard to blow a 37. We're gonna be very, we will not play prevent defense. Is that okay? They're the football players and the great people. And you are a great football state. We know all about prevent defense. You hold the team scoreless for almost four quarters. You just have to do it one more time. And the coach goes, prevent. Touchdown, touchdown. We don't, we don't play prevent. We will fight, and we will fight hard. But we're at a level that we've never been at. We have the highest poll numbers we've ever had. And that's because the people of our country are disgusted with what's happening. We're dominating crooked Joe Biden in the general election. The Harvard-Harris poll, not a good poll for me ever, has me way up and uh, leading by five, six, and seven points, with Trump up 18 points among independents. You know, you keep hearing about independence. How is he going to do with the independents? You know, independents like to have great walls, and they want to have, you know, we built almost 500 miles of wall, and then we were going to build another 200, and we had Mexico come in and give us 28,000 soldiers free of charge. You know, they say, oh, did you charge Mexico? I told the president, we need 28,000 soldiers while the wall is being built. And he looked at me and said, no, 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 we cannot. 28,000. He thought I was crazy. I said, no, no, you will give it. You will give it. You have, we need 28,000 soldiers. And he said, well, you know what? Uh, you're going to have to make a presentation. I said, you send whoever you want. And I said that to his top representatives. We want them, and we want them fast. We want them by Monday morning, 28,000. They said, no, no, we will not do that. I said, yes, you will. You're going to do it. You're going to do it. And the State Department people thought that I was a little crazy. They said, you know, this guy's asking for stuff. We've been after this for, for many years, like stay in Mexico. I got that, too. I said, give me to the State Department. A woman, very good, but she never won anything because Mexico would give her nothing. She worked on Mexico for 25 years. Good woman, but never got anything. I said, give me a top 10 list. Give me the list I want. And I see my great, he's the single greatest advertiser in history. I don't know what the hell, I don't know how much money you can make with pillows. You know, if, if it was oil, I understand. I don't understand the pillow stuff, but I'll tell you, he's, He's been a, he's a true patriot. I see him sitting right there and he loves it. How many rallies have you come to? Like 50 or 70 or something? But Mike is a great guy. Go buy his pillows or his slippers or his towels, whatever the hell you want, just buy it. But they said to me, 
They said, no, no, we will not do it. I said, yes, you will. Here's the story. We're going to put a tariff on your cars and all the other things you're selling into the United States of America where you're making a fortune of 25 percent. That's billions and billions of dollars. And if you don't give us those soldiers, by Monday morning, I'm putting that tariff on and I'm signing it right now, right in front of you. Here it is. I'm signing it. I signed it. Uh, Sir, we'd like to uh, have a five-minute pause. May I make a phone call? So he went and called, I assume, the president of the country. Came back five minutes later. Now, he was saying, absolutely, we wouldn't give. Now he goes, sir, it would be our great honor to give you 28,000 soldiers to protect your border. We think that's very, and it would be our great honor to create a policy of stay in Mexico. You know, they used to stay in our country. That was the end of it. We wanted them to stay in Mexico, and we wanted them to come in maybe to our country after they've been checked out. So we had hundreds of thousands of people staying in Mexico, right on the other side of the wall that we built. And uh, it worked out very well. We had a very good relationship, actually, with the president of Mexico. He's a socialist, but that you can't have everything. But we had a very good relationship. But we got everything. We got so many other things, literally with phone calls. You know the story in France where they were going to charge us 25 percent, a tremendous — they were going to charge us a tremendous amount for any company doing business in France. They were going to charge us a lot of money, these companies. I said, you can't do it. I gave it to my people. I said, tell them they can't do it. They came back a week later. Well, they won't listen to us. They're going to do it. It's almost too late. I think it's being passed. So I called up Emmanuel Macron. I said, Emmanuel. You're not going to charge 25 percent to our companies doing business in France. What the hell do they need France for anyway? You're not going to do it. He said, oh, Donald, it is too late. I'm sorry. It's too late. I said, well, I'll tell you what's too late. On Monday morning at 7 o'clock in the morning, I'm putting a 100 percent tariff tax on your wine and champagne that comes into the United States. That takes place at 7 o'clock on Monday morning. This was a Friday. So you let me know within the next half hour what's going to happen. But we are putting a tax on, and I've just signed the bill. And it's going to go into an effect in two days. And he called me back about uh, two minutes later. He said, Donald, we have decided not to put the 25 percent tax on. We have decided. Now, here's, that's the good news. The bad news, as soon as Biden got in, they put all sorts of bad things in. And nobody calls him. Do you think Biden calls him and says, by the way, you're not going to put that tax on? You think that happens? I don't think so. He doesn't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> and in the big new premise poll, we're beating Biden by five points with the sanctimonious losing to Biden 33 to 38. The sanctimonious is actually not doing a good job. You know, you wonder why I don't like him. Because I got him elected. He was losing badly. He was down many, many points, I think like 38 or 40 or some ridiculous number. He actually talks about it in the old days. And he came to my office, tears in his eyes, saying, please, can I have your endorsement? I said, listen, you're so far down to a man named Adam Putnam, who was the Secretary of Agriculture, which is a big deal in Florida. He was down by many, many, many points. Like, I mean, many points. It was over. I said, if I brought back George Washington and Abraham Lincoln, you don't have a chance. He said, sir, I'm telling you, if you endorse me, I'll win. So I remember that I saw him on television a couple of times talking about the impeachment hoax number one and impeachment hoax number two and fighting for me a little bit. He was no Jim Jordan. He was no, you know, some of the great guys we have. But he was fighting for me a little bit. Always on television. I said, and I didn't know Adam Putnam, unfortunately, for him. <laughs> so I endorsed Ron to Sanctimonious, and he went like a rocket ship. <laughs> and uh, he took this massive lead immediately, like it took one night. And he, was, he went from being way, way down to being way, way up. He ended up winning the primary in a landslide a few weeks, a very short time later. But then he couldn't have won the general because he was running against the guy Gilliam. Remember the guy who was going to be the star of the Democrats? African-American man, a very handsome man. Turned out to be a crack addict, but we don't have to mention that. that was... <laughs> but he was the hottest one. Him and Stacey Abrams were the two hottest politicians in the Democrat Party. He was going to be the next president, they said. He's going to be the next. First, he's going to be governor. And the sanctimonious comes up to me. I can't beat him. There's no way. I said, look, we'll do some rallies. Would you? Could you do three? I said, three is a lot. 
But I ended up doing three rallies for him, and they were big. They had thousands and thousands and thousands of people. You know about our rally. We had, in your little area, a little while ago, we had a rally, 68,000 people. We broke, we broke Elvis's record, right? So I did these rallies for him, and he ended up winning. He won. It was a big upset. He ended up winning. And then three years later, they said, are you going to run for president against the former president? And he said, I have no comment. He said, he has no comment. That means he's running. That son of a bitch. And he has been like, Pshee. so if, with those people, uh, Lee Greenwood, when they ask, we have to do a song about this, I think, Lee, but when they ask me whether or not I like him, I'm not a big fan of his, you know? not a big fan. I like loyalty. You know, they told me that loyalty doesn't matter in politics. Some of my genius is right backstage right now. Sir, don't tell that story because loyalty doesn't matter in politics. I said, I all right, so that is former President Trump there speaking a bit earlier tonight in Montgomery, Alabama. Taking a live look right now. This is over at the White House in D.C., a live look. Now, former President Trump was speaking in Montgomery, touching on the indictment and had some choice words for President Biden and special counsel Jack Smith reiterating, quote, I'm being indicted for you. Now, it's important to note federal officials have said there's been no evidence of widespread voter fraud or manipulation of voting machines in the U.S. Multiple reviews in the battleground states where Trump disputed his loss did confirm those election results were accurate. They have also vowed to ensure the integrity of the election again in 2024. Join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the McCad TV family. Please like and share McCad TV. We love you all. Please support McCad TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.